Hello, my name is Jim Sebring, and this is the first of many educational videos brought to you by the American Morgan Horse Association Young Adult Alliance. Today, we're going to talk with Harry Sebring about how to harness a horse. Harry is the owner and operator of Sebring Stables, and he's also a multi-titled harness trainer. I'll let him take it from here. Okay, hello, I'm Harry Sebring. I am the immediate past president of the American Morgan Horse Association. I'm also the chair of the Morgan Judges Standards Committee. And I'm here with you today to show you the parts of the harness and how to uh, properly adjust a show harness. First, we'll start with the work harness, and I'm going to start at the front of the horse without the bridle. We'll do that last. First thing we use is a running martingale. I like to have the martingale with the over-the-shoulder strap, which holds it in place when you put it on the horse. You'll see why when we get to the horse. That's followed by our breast plate or breast collar. This also fits over the shoulders of the horse up by the withers. And following that is our surcingle. Now our surcingle is, has many different parts to it. This itself is the surcingle. What you're looking at, what I'm showing you here, that's a surcingle. This is accompanied by a turn back strap, which many people call a crupper strap. Either term is correct. A crupper and your lines and your lugs or tugs. Again, either term is correct. These happen to be French lugs. They're also called quick hitch lugs. And the other pair that you can use are the normal tie down lugs with a safety girth, which is right here. You, the, if you use these lugs, you have to use a safety. This, this little piece of equipment here is called a safety girth, a dead man's girth, or a tragedy girth. So if this is not in good shape, you may be in trouble. Uh, you'll notice on the front of my harness, I have a little strap. This fits to the front of the horse. This obviously goes back to the tail. When you put this on, when you put your martingale and your breastplate on a horse, I like to tie them together so they fit neat and they don't get in the way of your lines. I also happen to have draw lines on this harness. I use both draw lines and straight lines. These straight lines have handholds and when I have people come to practice, I like to practice, like to have them practice in the uh, harness lines that they're going to use when they show their horse. So consequently we use these on our horses and draw lines. We here at Sebring Stables like to use three different kinds of cruppers. We use the regular harness style crupper, which is going to fit. This is most closely resembles the show harness. Uh, and then we move up to a wrapped harness, a uh, wrapped crupper, I'm sorry. And this is just to look, ask the horse to hold his tail a little higher. And then we also use the bustle crupper. This is for horses who are trying to soften their tails and make them a little more, little, their tail carriage a little more uh, flowing. Uh, when you use this, this softens their tail head and it allows them to have the waterfall look of their tail. Now we're going to move on to our bridles. We at Seabring Stables use three different kinds of bridles uh, when we jog horses. And the first thing I'm going to tell you about is the cavison. And I'll show you the fit of the cavison later in this video when we fit the show harness. But we use a nice soft cavison, and I don't make my cavisons too tight. I don't like to force the horses to keep their mouth shut. I like them to learn to keep the mouth shut by themselves. We jog in three different kinds of bridles, as I said before. A side check bridle. This one happens to have two bits. They work independently. Uh, usually when we make the transition from just teaching a colt to long line, we'll go from an open bridle to a single bit side check. And then we'll move to the two bit side check, which I just showed you. And then the final uh, process is teaching them to wear an overcheck. And when I teach my colts to wear an overcheck, I'll always tie a broken check to the snaffle bit. This, you can, this allows you to make your check rein shorter, um, excuse me, longer, so it doesn't pull on their mouth and it will stay and not fall out of their mouth and bother their teeth. So this is, you know, a process that we use in our training to allow the horses to wear, learn to wear an overcheck without really wearing an overcheck. 
when we hook horses for the first time, they always wear either a side check or an over check. I have a tendency to use side checks more than over checks, but the reason for this is to have a check so that you can set the limit to how low they can put their head. Because the lower they can put their head, the higher they can kick and buck. So you want to hold their head up to some degree, but you want to let them have some freedom of movement with their head when you're first hooking them. I believe that's another video. <laughs> Once horses learn how to wear, to jog, and are safe, I like to do a lot of jogging in open bridles to encourage them to wear their head in the proper position by themselves. Um, you will have some horses that cannot do this. But if a horse is built correctly to be a harness horse, uh, an open bridle, they can wear an open bridle and still wear their head in the proper position. And that makes your job to teaching them and to wear an overcheck and be a harness horse uh, a lot easier when you go to, wear an over, to wearing an overcheck. I will say there's two more bits that I use frequently. I like a twisted wire on my seasoned horses and a straight overcheck. This straight overcheck bit basically replaces this broken overcheck. And this also, this is a, the sign of a horse that is uh, well trained and can wear a harness and wear his overcheck. If they can wear this, these are fine, fine harness horses. The next step in this process, I'm going to just show you how I place my work harnesses on my horses and then we will uh, put on an actual show harness because there is, I do place them slightly differently from my work harness. Uh, this mare is CBMF Me First. She's a four-year-old pleasure driving mare. She belongs to the Hockey Vieira family. Uh, she's by CBMF Crown Prince and out of uh, Treble's first take. Uh, we think she's pretty special. First, First we'll put on the martingale. And remember we want it pulled back like this, followed by the breast collar. I call it a collar. It may be called uh, breastplate. Then we'll put the girth Sir single on her. I place my sir single right here at the base of their withers. You can see where their withers end. I like to set my crupper before I set my um, girth. I always undo my crupper because it's easier than pulling it down to the end of the bone of their tail. This little girl is a little cold tailed this morning, but if you're patient, She'll be fine. Make sure when you put a crupper on a horse that you don't have any telltale ha extraneous hairs coming around the soft skin of their tailbone because if that cuts, that's painful and they'll kick you. Next thing I adjust is this little strap right here. I want this to set the, where my sh shoulder strap is and where my martingale strap is. Followed by the girth. You run your girth through your martingale and then just snug it, but not too tight. After I've set my girth, I will set my crupper. Now remember the crupper is the turn back strap is what keeps the buggy from riding up on your horses because we don't use breaching on show horses or work horses. You can have you have some tension, but it's not so tight that they'll grab their tail and pull it under. And once we've done that, we, you can, with a draw line, I normally go through the martingale, through the line, through the ring of the bit, then to the top. So you always encourage them to bend up, to raise up here and bend at the pole, not at the withers. Many people want to put a draw line stick get their nose pulled in and they'll keep their lines too low and they get some bending at the wither so they have a hard time getting their horse's head in the proper position for to be a show harness horse. Um, I think we'll go from here and we're going to go ahead and set the show harness on this mare and then we'll show you how it fits on the cart and maybe jog her a step for you.
If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting the Young Adult Alliance. For more information, email youngadultcouncil1 at gmail.com or call the American Morgan Horse Association at 802-985-4944.